Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are ready for part 5 of Roaring Sun. You can find the story and author's information in the description below. Also don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into the story. Naruto was walking with Sakura, Sasuke, and Choji trailing behind them. Team HNCU made their way around the corner, toward their new home. It was only a shock when they noted that Team JMPR and Team RWY also rounded the opposite corners together. Oh cool, they have the same idea as us. Sakura stated excitedly while rushing over to meet them. Hey guys, you all are looking for a dorm near Forever Fall and the courtyard too? Yeah, our scrolls indicated that these were the last three available, Ruby replied while showing Sakura her scroll, the pinkette breathing a sigh of relief. So, I guess that means we'll all be neighbors. Totally, yeah. I can't wait to see what kind of rooms they are. Hey, speaking of rooms, Sasuke, can you open that door? Their team leader inquired from the raven-haired boy, watching him as he shrugs before walking toward it. Sasuke expected a quaint little room, nothing fancy. Instead, what he found was a room with a large window for beds and around 250 square feet of living space. He had to admit to himself, the facilities of Beacon Academy had Atlas beat any day of the week. The beds themselves weren't anything to write home about, but inside their dorm was something he was already calling dibs on. I called dibs on the first shower, Sasuke stated before rushing in with his bag in tow. Oh, that's cool. I'm Jile, wait a freaking minute. They got a shower. Sakura nearly screeched before running toward the door, leaving Choji and Naruto alone with the rest. John, Naruto extended his hand out to him. Nice to finally meet you. I saw you at the initiation battle. You did great. Oh, did I? Thanks, um. Naruto, right? John asked his fellow blonde. They both locked eyes. Yang noted everyone's eyes when she met them. On the surface level, people considered all eyes of the same color to be, well, the same color. However, there were always different shades. John's eyes were a brighter blue, an azure oceanic blue. Cute. Probably would snag the right lady if he gave them eye contact. Naruto's, on the other hand, were in Azure but leaned more toward Cerulean the more she looked at it. If John's eyes were off the ocean, Naruto's eyes were the skies above said ocean. They held a warmth, mirth even, that most people lost when dealing with Grimm. Weiss walked over to Blake, tapping her shoulder. The amber-eyed beauty turned around, looking at the SDC heiress, her arms crossed. She raised an eyebrow at the shorter girl, waiting for her to speak while everyone else started to talk among themselves. Look, Weiss rubbed her right forearm nervously, about earlier. What about earlier? I'm sorry, truly, it wasn't my place to inject my opinion. I was very uncouth about my choice of words. You are my teammate here at Beacon. So, Weiss extended her hand with a small smile. Shall we bury the hatchet? Blake thought for a moment, letting the apology roll around in her head. She sounded sincere, but Schnee's were always a little shifty. Sighing to herself, she reached out with her own hand, gripping Weiss's and shook it. Ruby happened to look behind her, smiling as her other two teammates came to an understanding. That's when she heard bickering coming from Nora and Rin. Nora, no offense, but I have been needing a shower for weeks now, Rin argued while crossing his arms, not even raising his voice. I'll come on, Rin. I'll only take five minutes. She whined a little while looking at Pira. If everyone is desperate for a shower, we can do it in groups. Everyone stared at her, making it seem like she grew a second head almost. John, who had started a discussion with Naruto, stopped immediately and turned to Nora. Naruto himself looked past John's shoulder. The entire rest of the teams just looked at her. She shrunk back, slowly, and rubbed her head nervously. What, come on, this isn't any different than showering at a gym. Nora argued childishly while blushing. Bunch of prudes. Ren placed his hand on Nora's shoulder, smiling. But Nora, you do realize if you're the last one to take the shower you can stay in there as long as you want. Oh yeah, okay. You know what? You all go in there. Wash up. Go, go, go. She shouted at Rin, pushing him into the dorm room. Scrub a dub dub. John mentally realized that this was his team. He just stood there looking at Nora. Oh, gods above, this is going to be a challenge. Actually, I took a shower before coming here at Beacon. Plus, I have some dry shampoo in my bag, Pira told Nora before digging it out. So, I'll just need the sink and five minutes tops. Jane Pierre's leader secretly smelled his pits, reeling back slightly. I need to wash the dogs. Oof. Yang stretched out, yawning. I could use a shower. Ruby? Me too, but I think we should handle the bed situation first. She replied to her while looking into their dorm. We need a lot more space than this. 
Young peeked inside with her sister, along with Weiss and Blake. All of Team RWY nodded at each other before running and slamming the door shut. Naruto, Choji, and Team JMP R minus Rin were still standing in the hallway. Sakura had retreated into the dorm room to change out of her clothes while Sasuke showered. Naruto looked at the dry shampoo. You know I've been meaning to try that stuff. How does it work? Oh, simple really. You just spray it on and spritz the hair with water a few minutes after. Do you want to try some? Pira inquired while reaching into her bag. I got mainly feminine scents. Naruto waved her off, smiling. I grew up with a younger sister. Sometimes I got our shampoo mixed up. Got anything lavender scented? Yep, here you go. Pira tossed the bottle to him. If you like it, please keep it. Oh sure, thank you. I'm pretty sure I'll love it. Hey, Johnny boy, are you doing okay? Naruto inquired as John was sniffing himself. I got some emergency pit cleaners. Thank gods. I'll pay you back, man. John pleaded while holding out his hands as Naruto rummaged through his bag. A small bottle of pit wash landed in his hands. I shall get to using this right away. I think I have enough time to run to the gym downstairs for their showers. Well then get to stepping, fearless leader, move it. Nora yelled with excitement, watching John run. Hey, Blondie, quick question for you. Are you going to get that badass sword fixed? Of course, Yang said that her sister is a weapons nut, so I'm just waiting for them to get settled in. Honestly though, I'm not sure how I feel about using it as a katana. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bad with swords, but I just don't think it fits me too well. Naruto admitted while feeling the clothes scabbard tied to his back. Nora nods, smiling brightly, I hope you get it fixed soon. I mean, that troll grim was a worthy bad mama jama to fight. The redhead warrior of Team Jampier smiled, giving an approving nod to Nora's words. I would have struggled in that fight alone. You and Young made a great team out there. I don't think any other team, no matter how you mix us, would have pulled it off. Pira complimented Naruto, and by extension Young, although the other blonde was busy setting up the room next to them. Nora looks at Naruto, smiling like a giddy schoolgirl. So, are you and Young a thing? What? No. Why does everyone think that? Naruto answered, but blushed slightly while rubbing the back of his head. We're just friends. You both do flirt a lot, Nora teases while hearing the door open from their dorm room. Oh, Rin, you're finally out. Rin had a towel over his head, his lone magenta strand poking down. He was wearing a white t-shirt with black pants. Stretching before Nora bumped into him on her way in, Pira scooted by him and gave a meek little, sorry, while doing so. The ninja of Team Jan Pira yawns, looking at Naruto and Choji, so, Choji, your semblance is a little weird. I know right, I can expand pretty much any part of my body. Choji stated while smiling brightly. I used to be the life of the party back in my hometown. Sakura came walking out of their dorm room, wearing a button-up green shirt with tin cargo pants. She was also wearing pink tennis shoes. Her ears were pierced with little peridot earrings. Her hair was put back in a ponytail. How do I look? Guys, you look like you're ready to chill out for the rest of the day, Sakura. Naruto replied before leaning against the wall closest to him. Choji. Um. Choji blushed slightly. You look nice. Ah, thank you. Sakura thanked her teammates while waving them off playfully. Sasuke is almost done with his shower. He's using something mango scented. You mean to tell me the emo isn't using something like sword body wash? He questioned, only to get a small tap at the back of his head. Ow, I was just joking. Be nice, Sakura chided him lightly before patting his shoulder. By the way, I overheard Nora. As your team leader, I don't think you two flirt too much. You're just feeling each other out. See, that's all I'm trying to tell them, Databeo. Well, Naruto, I don't think they can hear us since they got music playing. So, I'm just going to speak candidly about this entire situation. You broke a million lean sword on the chance of helping her defeat a Grim. If that doesn't scream attraction, I frankly give up, Choji stated while pursing his lips. Pira. Pira came walking out of the dorm room fluffing out her hair a little before tying it back into a ponytail. She stretched looking at them. I overheard. Just give me a second, she replied before finishing her ponytail. Well, I'd use a little more tact. But yes, I can see Choji's point. You didn't stop to think because you were more focused on protecting her than rationalizing a plan that involved preserving your weapon, Pira commented while placing a hand on his shoulder. It's okay to be friends though. No one should pressure you into anything you don't want. Naruto frowned at that and sighed. It's not that I wouldn't mind it. It's just, well, I'm turning 17 soon. Wait, you're not 17 already? Sakura yelled out, looking at him. Holy crap. Yeah, 
I kind of passed one of my classes in Atlas early, and I helped take down a criminal there so. Naruto explained but then started shaking while rubbing his shoulder. Let's just say they got what was coming to them. Rin smiles, holding his fist out, now that's awesome. The blonde bumped it, smiling a little bit more. I just felt like it was the right thing to do at the time. I almost got expelled because of the classes I was missing. I hate that. You're a hero to have taken down someone that warranted you passing a class early. What class was it exactly? Pira inquired while thinking back about her basic classes. Investigation? Yep, that'd be the one. But that was a hard class. The redhead sighed while thinking poorly of her memories back then. I only passed by the skin of my teeth. I was never one to investigate things too blunt. Naruto chuckled while reflecting on his time in Atlas, only to frown as one memory plagued his thoughts. Pira took notice, observing the sudden change in him before he slowly regained the light in his eyes from before. She bit her lip, thinking she had said something to offend him somehow. I'm sorry, I... Don't be, Pira. It's nothing you did. I just have some. Uh, memories of my time there as well, Naruto admitted before turning to Ren. So, how long do you think Nora will be? Rin responded by opening the door, singing invading the open airway. I'm queen of showers, I'm queen of showers. Everyone watched as Rin closed the door, the shower's melody continuing. Probably a while. Uniform fittings are in half an hour, Naruto realized, then heard Sasuke exit the room. About time, duck hair. Sasuke hummed, poking his left ear with a pinky. Sorry, couldn't hear you. Must have some water in my ear. Choji, Sasuke held out a clean towel, you or him. I guess it's my turn then. Sorry, Naruto, but I haven't showered in three days since coming to Vale, Choji said to his teammate before walking into their dorm room. You all can straighten out the dorm when I get out, it'll only take a minute. Sasuke crossed his arms, looking at the rest of Team Hensio. What did I miss? Nothing much, Rin replied, taking his towel off, just getting ready to move some beds around. Weren't we talking about Naruto's relationship? Pira innocently inquired. There is no relationship. Naruto reminded them both. We're just friends. Sasuke chuckled, looking over at the blonde. So you're telling me if you didn't have the chance? Shut up. I can't hear you lala. -la. Sakura laughed, observing Naruto holding his ears. Well, there's your answer, Sasuke. Hey, the raven-haired huntsman in training chuckled. I'll catch you at the uniform fitting. Sakura stretched her arms out before walking away. Catch you at the fitting. Pira smiled, beginning to follow Sakura. Mind if I join you? By all means, Ms. Nikos, come along. Sakura rallied, looking back over her shoulder. You boys be nice. Right? See you there, Sakura. Naruto called out before turning back to Sasuke. Okay, so, listen, I don't want that kind of stuff. Ren hummed a little bit. Naruto, there's no shame in admitting that you're attracted to the opposite gender. I am non-judgmental. Besides, have you met Nora? She practically ships everyone who meets. It's quite the addiction, the ninja pointed out watching the blonde blush a little bit. No, you don't understand. I don't want anything serious, Naruto nervously mumbled while rubbing the back of his head and blushing. Am I attracted to her? Of course, it's just... Sasuke noted the sadness in his eyes. Look, I'm sorry if I'm pushing a sensitive topic, so I'm going to stop. Choji stepped out of the dorm, stretching. Wow, what a shower. The large teen noticed that Sasuke, Rin, and Naruto were in deep conversation, with the blonde looking away after Sasuke began to step toward the direction of where they needed to go for their fitting. Hey man, are you okay? Choji inquired when Naruto suddenly lost that light in his eyes again. Naruto? The blonde took a deep breath, smiling before the light once again came back. He held a bright smile. Oh, nothing much, Choji. You guys go on ahead. I'll straighten out the dorm. Are you sure? Yeah, totally. I got this. Naruto cheerfully stated before watching Choji shrug and begin walking away. Now alone, the blonde took a deep breath and entered the dorm room alone. His heart began racing, thinking about the conversation he just had. His skin crawled as he remembered her touch on him, biting his lip until it bled, his eyes shrinking as he remembered the words she'd whispered into his ear. My little artist is blooming. So, I'm going to ask him to race me tonight since we're going to dad's this weekend. Young stated his music played in their room. I'll be fixing up these beds when I get in tonight. What time? Blake wondered aloud while reading her book. Because I don't want to have you sneaking and doing the walk of shame. Oh, I just might to annoy you, Yang teased before looking at her sister. What is it, Ruby? Um, what's the walk of shame? Yeah, you're still too young for that. So don't worry, 
The buxom blonde replied before looking at Weiss, who was doing some sort of cleansing ritual on her face. Yo, Snowflake, got anything to say about me coming in late? Weiss blushed a little. Nope, not at all. You have every right to do what you will. I'm not your mother, nor your leader. Good, she's on a roll, Blake muttered too softly for her to hear. Young, I do have a serious question. Shoot, what if he doesn't want a relationship, like a serious one? The black-haired beauty asked, peering up from her book. I mean, what if he just wants to be friends? Young thought about it for only a second. Ever heard of casual dating? Young, Ruby spoke up. What I think Blake is saying is, what if he's not as interested as you think? Young stared at her sister, then broke down laughing. Rubbing a tear off her cheek from where she was laughing, she calmed herself down. Oh, Ruby, that's funny. Because let me tell you something. Naruto Namikaze is a flirting pro. She punned before grinning playfully. Oh, gods no. You could say that I have the right flirtalizers, Young continued, watching her sister groan in pain. What's wrong, little sis, growing pains? Okay, that's it. I'm going to the dressing room early. Ruby yelled out before getting up and being followed by her sister. Oh, come on, sis. Don't you want to help your big sister with her own issues? She teased, getting up behind and following her out of the room. Blake looked at Weiss. So, are you going with me? I suppose, but I'm waiting for this cleanser to work. I got my first pimple since coming here. Can you believe that? Weiss complained while examining her skin. Forgot how much those hurt. Blake rolled her eyes. See you there, Weiss. The girl deftly got down from the top bunk, landing with ease before walking out of the door, leaving Weiss there, all alone. She had received a text from her mother, stating that the artist to paint her would be at Beacon this weekend. I finally get to meet him, Odorami Kazanami. Grabbing the first bed, he used his aura to strengthen his muscles before placing it in the corner of the room, furthest from the door. He unscrewed the legs to let the box spring and mattress sit on the floor using the broken piece of Kajitsunamura to whittle them into long dowels. He then drilled a hole into the bases of the footboard posts and headboard posts with the broken sword. He placed the next bed on top of the other one, creating a wooden bunk bed supported by long inch thick dowels. The blonde did the same to the second set of beds. It only took him five minutes at most, finishing up. He felt sweat running down his face while looking down at his scroll to check the time. His fitting would be in 15 minutes, making him nervous. His hand shook while still lingering on those words. He got out his secondary scroll, playing music to help calm his nerves. Turning it on to some pop music, he lay in the bed for a moment to calm his nerves, bopping his head up and down to the music, thinking of nothing other than the music. Dancing is what I do when I think of you. Dancing is what clears my soul. Getting up, he took a deep breath before doing the running man, dancing to the beat of the song as its bass blasted throughout the room. Walking in place as he spun around mid-walk once, the blonde bopped his head side to side. Dancing is what makes me whole. Dancing is what makes me flow. Naruto resonated with the song. Spinning around once, the blonde broke it down on the floor, falling backwards to one hand and spinning around on it once. Each move of his dance was eerily similar to some of his fighting moves involving kicks. The blonde rolled forward, springboarding with his hands until he became upright before spinning around once. He bopped his body to the music, moving to the exact beat. Lost in the music, failing to feel a buzz from his primary scroll until the second one hit a minute later. He stopped mid-dance before grabbing his scroll from his front pocket. Yellow bird, hey there whiskers, have you gotten fitted yet? Yellow bird, hello. Naruto stopped for a minute, texting back before checking the time. He grabbed his second scroll before exiting the room, nearly running right into Weiss, whose hair was still slightly damp. The blonde stopped mid-step while she nearly stumbled back. Hey, watch it. She yelled out before looking up. Oh, it's you, the Troll Slayer. So, is that your nickname for me? Naruto questioned while getting some earbuds out. Sorry, I have a song going on with a good beat, but I can still hear you with my fox ears. No, it's something Ruby came up with. Anyway, why are you running so late? She inquired while walking with him toward the fitting. You're sweating too. Oh, I was just dancing. It's something I do to get my mind off stuff. Naruto answered while putting his hands behind his head. Like Yang. He stopped for a minute, catching back up. No, Yang is fine. Listen, Weiss. I know we got off on the wrong foot. But I want to be friends. No problems. But just tell me something, because I'm trying to understand. You and Yang flirt, the heiress pointed out matter-of-factly. So, aren't people flirting also dating? Not exactly, Naruto told her while both rounded the corner. 
We're just friends. Weiss? I get it. Someone like you growing up thinking that faunists always have ulterior motives for preferring humans. Wait, you heard that? Giant fox ears, schnee, I hear pretty much everything within reason. Especially when you got uppity with Blake, he replied while walking down the grand hall with her. My mother is human, my father was faunus, and they had a happy marriage. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, he said while holding a door open for her. Just be better. A buzz came from his pocket. He pulled it out to see it was Yellow Bird again. Yellow Bird, meet me out by the garage tonight. Let's have a small dirt race. Winner gets anything within reason. Naruto smiled, texting her back that she was on. He just hoped that Kitsune would hold up well on dirt roads and trails. After all, his motorbike was mainly built for the streets of Vale, not the back roads. He saw her bike, which had some treading on her tires meant for limited off-road capability. He texted her back, sure, but what happened to this weekend's spar? She quickly texted her reply, maybe I just want to see you winky face. Hmm, okay then, let's get this fitting over with. The night came quickly. Naruto had snuck out of his dorm, walking silently in the courtyard before coming toward the garage on the other side of the school. There she was in her full yellow tracksuit. She had her helmet on, but if only he could see the smile on her face. Hello there, yellow bird. Naruto greeted her with a smile. Been a minute. Certainly has been, whiskers. I also see you talking to other girls. Careful now. I might just get a little jealous, she teased before walking with a sway to her hips, opening the garage. The blonde couldn't help himself but stare when she walked away. For some reason, he found her too mysterious to ignore, and her confidence screamed out to him. That was what he found attractive, confidence, someone knowing what they wanted. No second guessing, just pure unadulterated thought and reaction. She got out her motorcycle, walking it out. Didn't know I was claimed, he joked while walking Kitsune next to her. Should I update my veil page status? Gur, feisty aren't cha, her voice purred while looking at him. Where's your helmet? Whiskers? Oh, I thought you liked seeing my face, he teased her back, only for her to not have the same tone as before in response. Aren't you going to wear your helmet? She retorted while Naruto walked Kitsune besides her. Be real shame to clean that handsome face off a tree somewhere. He blushed a little bit before picking his helmet up out of a storage compartment in Kitsune. She chuckled before leading him toward a dirt path. He followed her, led by both the challenge and the need to release some pin-up frustration. The two made it down a hill where a dirt trail wide enough for two motorbikes was. He felt a ding on his scroll, opening it up to see that she sent him an attachment. Open it, it's a racing app called Veilspeed. It's not exactly 100% legal, but screw it, we're here for a good time. He opened it, seeing where a track had been drawn by her. It strangely looked like a heart, which made him blush a little. Little on the nose, don't you think that a bayo? He teasingly questioned while looking up at her. She walked over to him. The damn sway in her hips was driving him nuts. She took one of her fingers, oh loved, poking him in the chest. Look here, whiskers, I'm a girl who knows what she likes. Besides, she traced her finger over his heart, something tells me you want to do this too. She wasn't calling it wrong either, he wanted this. Blushing a little, he then looked away bashfully, so when you meant by within reason. That's for you to find out, she teased before walking over to her bike, straddling it slowly, emphasizing her hips. Naruto found himself instinctually walking forward almost passing up his bike. Taking a deep breath to calm himself down, he then hopped on Kitsune. He placed the scroll on top of a holster for it. The racing app began to count down, with him driving up next to her. Music played on his bike, the same song from earlier blasting from his motorbike speakers. She looked over at him. I love that song, Kronos? Yeah, one of my favorites. Perhaps we can listen to it together one night? He offered up and found her laughing afterward. What? Nothing. You're just cute. She flirted before revving her engine. Maybe we can have a little dance till the break of dawn tonight? That made his face flush red. He slowly fidgeted while putting his helmet on. He revved Kitsune's engines, and when the scroll flashed green they both took off. Yellow blasted past him as her tires got more traction, but he slowly caught up. They routed the first bend in the dirt trail, skidding on the dirt. He nearly slid off the path. She laughed back at him before blasting forward. Revving Kitsune, getting her engines going, the fox Faunus overcharged his engine before feeling himself fly forward. This was stupid, reckless, but with three days before any schoolwork, he needed release. Plus, she was here, and with painting slamming most of his weekend, he found little time to cram any more time with Yellowbird. That laugh though, he felt that it was familiar. 
They rounded another bend, coming toward the outer wall of Beacon Academy that kept most of the Grimm separated from them. In the deeper parts of the forest, the trail narrowed until the two were practically side to side. She suddenly reached out, grabbing his hand which made his heart skip a beat as they took a sharp turn. Woohoo! She hooped loudly as they power slid through the first arch of the heart-shaped track. Damn whiskers, don't you just feel alive doing this? Yeah, I do, Naruto realized before screaming with her. Yeah well, dirt kicked up into dust inside the moonlight. Both riders drove past several broken trees. Coming to a sharp turn, she let go of his hand before slamming her brakes. He quickly followed behind, slicing past her while barely coming to a full stop on the trail. She revved up her sports bike before blasting forward. He did the same, catching back up to her and getting used to the dirt roads. Coming around the next arch, he found himself reaching out to her. Who forward, I like that she said with a sultry tone in her voice. This time he led the drift, sliding across the dirt road with ease compared to last time. She separated their hands as they came down to pure racing now. Their motorbikes roaring throughout the forest. He passed her up, only for her to do the same when his tires failed to get traction. Laughing while passing him, she blew him a kiss from inside her helmet. Both turned around a bend, now toward the end of the last curve. She nearly wiped out, which made him slow down. You okay? Damn broken trees, she cursed while maintaining a lead. Don't worry about me, whiskers. Okay, he smirked before passing her. Whatever you say, Bertie. She was stunned, speeding up her bike while coming to the end of the curve. She did a quick power slide that put her ahead of him because he did his slightly late. She blasted forward, her scroll dinging yellow and green, indicating that she had won the race. Sliding to a stop, she watched as he did the same when he came around the corner. The blonde took his helmet off, cursing slightly under his breath. I need to get off-road tires for Kitsune. He stated while driving over to her, getting off and leaning against Kitsune. She got off her bike, smiling under her helmet, sashaying toward him. What to do with you, whiskers? The biker pondered while looking him up and down. Getting near him and placing her hand on his face, I did say I want to touch this last time, didn't I? His face lit up red, feeling her stroke his face. He wanted to grab her, hold her to him, and throw that helmet off her face. It drove him crazy, this teasing. She then leaned upward suddenly pushing over his bike. He got up as she laughed, snorting even. He still was red in the face before smiling. You're such a tease. He complimented her before scratching his chin. Listen, I know I lost. 2-0, she pointed out matter-of-factly. How about this, a question and answer honestly? He nodded, sure, I can do that, easy peasy. Do you want to see me, you know, without the helmet? She asked, no teasing in her voice. The blonde bit his lip, taking a moment, if I said yes. Would you remove your helmet, no tricks? Nope, she popped the pee, watching him struggle. No tricks this time, whiskers. She watched him breathe in deeply, watching while she sat there pondering. He then smiled before reaching toward her helmet. This was it, and she knew it. He couldn't resist. Her heart beat against her chest rapidly, feeling him place a hand on her cheek under the helmet. Bothump. Bothump. Ba thump. She wondered what he'd do. Would he be surprised? Hell would he go in for a kiss? All the teasing earlier today, even last night. She couldn't help it because she was attracted to him. She didn't know if it was love, or some type of other attraction. Her face flushed out, her lilac eyes burning red from the increased anxiety. Something twisting up inside of her, coiling tight. Suddenly he stopped, flicking her helmet, the biggest crap-eating grin on his face. Wait wah. No, you son of a. She breathlessly spoke, something exploding in her. I need. What are you waiting for? Come on. I'm right here. I know you're right here, but. Naruto smiled softly before stroking her face through the helmet. Maybe, just maybe, I don't like getting freebies. Oh, too. So, you want to earn the look, huh? She teased before grabbing his hand into hers. You're a sweet guy, whiskers. Both of them stood there, holding each other's hand before she pulled away first. I have a quick question for you. Would you like to try me out in hand to hand? She inquired while leaning against her bike. Naruto thought about it, nodding his head. Sure. What? Wearing masks or something? I'd be wearing my mask, she replied before giggling a little bit. You beat me. I'll say you earned a look at my face. Shoot for say, this next Saturday. She hopped on her motorbike, but then heard him calling to her. Wait a second. I do have one more question for you. Sure. Go ahead. Whiskers, shoot it at me, she lecherously said before leaning on her bike, showing a little bit of her goodies. Don't be afraid. Anything you want to ask. 
Do you consider these dates? He inquired, rubbing his arm bashfully. I just want to know Dada Bayo. Maybe she singed before smiling softly under her helmet. You're cute when you act shy. Whiskers, got to admit that you got me hot and bothered earlier. His face turned beet red. Oh, sorry. Don't be sorry. She drove up to him. Do what you told Waishini. Be better. Hey, wait what? Naruto yelled out before she took off, leaving them with red cheeks burning bright red under the moonlight. She knew I talked to Weiss, so Weiss knows her? A man wearing a long, black suit, with a black top hat walked toward a female police officer. She stood there, aching, waiting for something. He smiled while holding out his hand. You know the deal, officer, no goods without the green, the man stated with a song in his voice. His purple undershirt fluttered in the wind. His dark skin glistened with sweat as he reached out his hand, watching the officer nervously reach up, pulling off her hat. This is the last time, doctor, please I just need. One last hit, she begged. The woman reached into her hat, pulling out a wad of cash. She shook when the man handed her a syringe filled with a green liquid. He placed his cane in front of them, watching as she quickly pulled her sleeve up, plunging the needle into her vein, her eyes widening and turning bright green. Drool fell from her mouth while he placed two fingers on the side of her head. The woman's eyes widened more when purple aura channeled into her head, his face forming a white mask made of dust from activating his semblance. It took the shape of a skull, and he smiled brightly as her nose bled. Yes, dear, tell the good doctor everything. He cooed while getting the information that he needed. I see. Oh, I see. So they're in that prison. Her body jerked under his spell, purple veins stretching down her face. If you relax, it'll enable me to do anything I please, he sang his merry tune before extracting something from her mouth, absorbing it into his. Alas, per Officer Warren, you couldn't escape your addictions. Because of it, you'll never go home. After all, Dr. Fasslier tried everything I could. Dr. Fasslier insulted the dead woman as her body slumped to the ground. He licked his lips as he stepped out into the alley, his dust mask fading off him, his cane tapping against the concrete path while looking toward the near-empty street. Plenty of people here to snack on, after all, his semblance made everyone a target for his immortality. Still though, he needs his merry men to gather his wealth. The only way to do such things was to break them free. Slowly, the dead woman shuffled behind him, moaning a little, her eyes glowing green from the purple veins. He was there, in Vale City, to do one thing. To take back his criminal underworld, no matter the cost. Because, this was his city, and no one would take that away from him. Especially not that yellow-haired bastard, Minato Namikase. Yong had made it to the finish line, watching as he pulled in behind her. The blonde and her have been dating for nearly eight months now. His bike, Kitsune, having off-road trading on it now. She turns to him, her helmet off and leaning on her bike. Well, whiskers, still too slow, she joked while just feeling the cold air rush around them. Both of them were getting ready to start their sophomore year in Beacon. She was giddy ready because today she was going to get something worthwhile for both of them. They were totally alone, here in Forever Fall. It was midday, class had gotten earlier. In fact, the whole week was done, and everything seemed right. He stood there, waiting for his punishment for losing. She just sashayed over to him, snapping her fingers. Her scroll began to play music using her bike speakers. Um, Yang, so what am I supposed to do since I lost another bet? She bit her lip before grabbing his jacket and pulling him close to her. I have one question for you, Whiskers. Pulling him close to her lips, gliding past his own toward his ear, if two pieces of toast are rubbing together, does one yell out they're about to crumb? His face flushed red. However, she slowly sunk her lips down his neck. The moan he releases was music to her ears. Both of them wanted this. They've waited well past where they were comfortable. Slowly, she glided upward, capturing his lips into a searing kiss. Both of them wrapped each other in their arms, slowly swaying to the motions of their own little dance to the music. The blonde felt her jacket getting pulled off her. She returned the favor by practically tearing his own off, squealing lightly when his lips got to the crook of her neck. She saw unicorns and starry rainbows in her eyes when he started sucking on her skin. Tracing his lips up toward her own, she gives him a small love bite, holding his lip gently with her teeth. She took control, tearing his shirt off, tracing her hands down his sides. Tracing her hand downward, rubbing his toned buttocks through his pants. He purrs in her ear before reaching into her shirt, unhooking her bra, and pulling it from underneath. He held it in front of her, like he just performed a magic trick. To be fair, she always heard how boys had trouble with bras, backing up and toward a tree, 
the buxom blonde moved back down his neck, sucking on the tender flesh, being sure to not only make him moan, but to leave her signature mark. This guy was Yang's and only hers, no one else. Which is why the little nibble with her teeth left a deep hickey, a red mark over the base of his neck, near the collarbone. Yang. She loved it when he moaned her name. Yang. It always made her feel so loved, extremely relished, and he looked damn sexy biting his lip. He slowly lowered his lips down to her neck, doing the same. She never bothered to hide them. Why should she? Let those other girls be jealous. This man was hers. They could kindly piss off. There were so many things that could be done with the tree behind him, but this was her dream. She could have him do anything. Hell, he could do everything to her. Maybe he was hungry for ice cream, or she could have really gone for a popsicle. Every type of dirty thought manifesting itself around her, playing to a host visual that made Buck up against him. She knew better. If she wanted it to be more realistic, her adorable lover would never pin to a tree. He wouldn't have her against it either. His eyes spoke of warmth, like a gentle ocean, and in them, her thoughts were confirmed about the type of guy he was. He wasn't someone who actively looked for easy. He wanted tenderness, sensational feelings. Anyone could easily catch a high. Testosterone made it easier. But for the true high, she wanted him to be comfortable. She snapped her fingers. In the middle of their bikes, a blanket formed. It was gold and orange, with rose petals all over it. The mind did funny things when attracted to someone, and somewhere in her mind, she knew this was just a dream. It felt real to her right now, and she didn't care. The buxom blonde wasn't wanting to wake up from it. They pulled each other onto the blanket. He was on top of her now, slowly tracing his lips over her neck, making her bite her lip. Grabbing his spiky yellow hair, the young woman pulled him by yanking him up by his hair. A sensual growl escaped her lips. The boxer turned them over, and now she straddled him, looking down with hungry eyes. Rolling her hips to tease him, he laughed before leaning up. She traced her finger down his chest. We should, whiskers. We should stop, he said, blushing. I don't want to go too far. Oh, whiskers, you're always so adorable. Did you ever think I may want this, here and now? Outside. He asked, feeling his heart race. Like right here and now? I heard that it could be, intense. She giggled with her pun. I don't know. How about we find out? Oh, and Yang. He lowered his head, meeting her eyes. Your alarm goes off in three, two. Motherfuck. Rise and shine, Vale. This is 107 the Hawk. Air. Yang shot up, sweat covering her. Her heart was beating rapidly. Finding herself in a slightly compromised position, with a pillow between her legs. She removed the pillow, her face flushed. Well, that was one hell of a wet dream, she realized, blushing checking the bed, breathing a sigh of relief as it was still dry. Thank God for small mercies. Getting out of bed, she walked toward the bathroom, intending to brush her teeth for the first time of the day, walking over toward her scroll, turning it off. Her team was still asleep, thankfully, and she pulled the earbuds out of her ears, humming a tune while she caught out clean clothes, especially clean undergarments. She was about to make it to the bathroom when she heard a whistle. She turned around slowly, seeing Blake reading her novel. So, want to talk about it? I don't know what you're talking about. Mim, sure, partner. Meanwhile, my bed was shaking like an earthquake. Look. Blake hopped down from her bed. We're both the most experienced girls on our team. So, let's not beat around the bush. Come on then. Young motioned her as they both entered the bathroom. She closed the door. Okay, so I may have had a dream. Did it involve you whispering, piss off, he's mine? She teased the blonde boxer slightly. Do you feel like it's weird? You mean the part that it's hard not to dream about him? Well, yeah, I find it a little weird, simply because my dating life has been zilch. Most guys never hold my interest because they just think I'm easy, Yang admitted to Blake before getting her coal-activated toothpaste out. Really though, I just like strutting it because I got it. And you should, that's none of their business. So, do you think it's weird to have those kinds of dreams? Yang inquired before brushing her teeth rapidly. Blake giggled a little bit, Yang. It's 100% natural to have those dreams, even involving total strangers. Why do we do that? She inquired before spitting into the sink. Blake smiled softly before tapping on her head. It's built into our instincts. Man, or woman, we're naturally inclined toward it. It's the itch that needs scratching. Huh, never thought about it that way. I always assumed that puberty just made everyone unreasonably horny sometimes. Yang admitted before getting some mouthwash. I mean, he doesn't even know it's me. I overheard you and Ruby talking about that. Some people might find it weird, but to me, well. 
Blake blushed a little bit, thinking, I think it's sensual as hell. Which is why that bastard has got me turned on. I was risking it all last night. I mean, he could have removed my helmet and saw my face. Maybe he'd freaked. But the moment he stroked my cheek and was acting like it, aw oh man. Young recounted while blushing madly, let's just say Mama Watts. Yet, I think you're the type of person to wait for the right type of guy. Blake reasoned before scooting Young out of the way of the sink. Want to know a secret? Sure. You really want him to melt like butter? Have you ever thought about playing with those fox ears? The amber-eyed beauty questioned slyly. Let's just say that I've read plenty of novels and have been curious. Now that you mention it, they're so fluffy, I do wonder what it would do to him? Gah, this is so stupid, because I shouldn't want to have him like this. Yang complained while leaning against the bathroom wall. Could it just be hormones at this point? Or should I say hormones? Blake nearly gags on toothpaste, laughing with a mouthful before spitting the suds out. She turns to her partner. That's probably the best pun you've come up with so far. No, Young, it's not hormones. It's purely 100% natural. Didn't you have a mother teach you this stuff? She questioned the buxom blonde, but watched as her face fell a little. My actual mom walked out on me when I was two, and the one I actually considered my mother died before I hit that stage in life. So, my dad did his best, but you know. It's hard explaining to a girl what's going on with her body when she wakes up screaming at two in the morning with her bed looking like a total murder scene. Young said while biting her lip, and then smiled softly. My dad did the best that he could. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. Don't worry about it, Blakey. You're totally fine, how could you have known? I kind of learned what I could from my friends, but there's a reason I don't hang out with them much. Total peer pressure sometimes, Young continued, laughing it off while her lilac eyes filled with warmth. Blake bit her lip, smiling, you know that other guy that's on his team, the skinny one. Oh damn. Go on, Blake. Get your man. She teased the older girl. Blake blushes a little bit, chuckling nervously. It's not like that. Besides, he seemed genuinely sweet to me. Hmm. Might just be a big softy under that darkness darkness persona he puts up. Then again, Naruto does have two scrolls. Yang pondered while remembering back during their team announcements. Two scrolls. Yeah, it was weird. It was like he was trying to hide it. Don't get me wrong. It is his business but I'm not exactly a fan of someone who fakes who they're being. She told Blake before watching her scrub her teeth. You used my toothpaste, by the way. Blake spat it into the sink after a minute. I have the same kind, so it's why I got it mixed up. No biggie. Young laughed before going to the hamper, pulling out a cleanish towel. I'm gonna shower. Bet you need it, earthquake. The buxom blonde laughs before shutting the shower curtain. Friday afternoon had arrived with the usually sunny skies becoming clouded. Naruto was stretching in the courtyard, tired from last night's little rendezvous with Yellowbird. All night she had been on his mind, in more ways than one. Of course, he wasn't looking to start any true relationship. He had just gotten into Beacon for God's sake. The last thing he needed to do was find himself a wife. Then again, someone to spend time with throughout the next four years wasn't a bad thing. His mother wasn't too happy with him at the moment. Kajit Sunomaru had broken when he saved Yang. He retold her the entire story but she wasn't all too pleased. It hit him a little bit, panging his heart, although she said that he did the right thing. His father's blade was laying inside his dorm room, broken. Ruby was supposed to meet him before they left Beacon to go to their place. Every weekend, around one o'clock, airships would arrive. They'd take the students anywhere in Vale City they wanted to go. They'd also return to the place they dropped off the students the next day. If you missed it, welp, get your hiking boots on. The rules of Beacon were firm but fair. There was no discrimination. Every person in these walls was treated equally. Didn't matter if you were human or faunus, skilled or unskilled. If you were behind these walls, you were equally just students, which is what Naruto was, a student and nothing more. Even as he walked out toward the amphitheater, still stretching. His match with Glinda was today, and Sasuke's with Ajbin right behind him. The teens agreed not to really spread it around school, so when Naruto was three feet from the entrance, it surprised him. Coco's team was standing there, along with John's. So, I heard through the grapevine that you're having a spar with a teacher. Coco stated while smirking, lowering her sunglasses, already making a name for yourself, Foxy? Um, well, I kind of dug myself into this one when they came to recruit me. Naruto replied, bashfully rubbing the back of his head. Who told you? Oh, why Miss Goodich, of course. You see, she's our favorite teacher, so we just came to see you get that ass hooped. The bonnet-wearing leader retorted with a smirk, You don't have your sword? 
It's broken. Oh yeah, I heard about that. You know that Troll Grim was a pretty good feat you, and Yang taking it down together no less dismisses it. Those things are a pain in the ass to kill because that fight could have gone so much worse. If it had gotten loose, even once, it'd start regenerating. Koko told Naruto while looking toward Yatsuhashi, didn't we kill one about a few months ago? It regrew the frigging hand you cut off. Yeah, Yatsuhashi remembered while smiling nervously, almost ate me too. Luckily, I came in, shoved my minigun down its mouth, let loose on that baby. BRRT, and its entire head would pop. She stated while looking toward Velvet, you got anything to add, Vel? Velvet, a rabbit faunus, merely looks at Naruto, blushing a little bit. No, not really. Sorry, Coco. Velvet apologized before walking into the amphitheater. Did I do something or... Oh, she's just shy around boy she likes, Coco offered, looking behind her to see the bunny girl blushing madly. Velvet has always been a shy girl. Yo, the dark-skinned fourth member greeted him. My name is Fox. Nice to meet you. Fox, Naruto extended his hand. I'm Naruto. Fox didn't raise his hand. Instead, he looked at him. You have a very weird aura. Huh? Oh, Fox here can sense someone's aura. It can get creepy how accurate he is sometimes, Yatsuhashi explained, looking at his teammate. Come on, man, shake the kid's hand. Hmm. Fox reached his hand out before taking Naruto's. All at once, his senses lit on fire. The boy's orange aura blossomed in front of his blind eyes. He had long trained them to sense the capacity of someone's aura. This kid in front of him, his aura practically drew in from the natural aura around it. It's warm, your aura, but I sense something there. Something out of place, he stated before retracting his hand. Sorry, I guess? Don't be sorry because that's something I've never felt before. Usually, someone's aura has a certain feel to it. Warm, cold, heavy, or light. Yours was both heavy and warm, like the sun. Fox explained before crossing his arms. Come to think of it, you felt familiar. Weren't you our cook back a week ago in Vale City? Oh, yeah, that was me. My family owns the place. So, did you get a feel on them as well? He inquired from Fox, watching the burnt originette rub his chin. Fox smiled just a little bit. Their aura felt about the same. Although, they weren't as heavy as yours. Well, my mom is out of practice, and my sister isn't really looking to become a huntress. She's more along the lines of wanting to sing, Naruto told him, smiling brightly when remembering his sister's singing. She's actually got lessons coming up. Neat. Coco interjected between them both, smiling. Okay there, Foxy, quit delaying the inevitable. Get in there, give Glinda a good match, and get your ass lightly kicked. You do know my other teammate, Sasuke, has a match with Ajpin right after, Naruto replied while his eye twitched a little. Besides, I don't think my ass isn't going to get kicked that bad. Bah, you're funny, good luck. The leader of CFY dragged Yatsuhashi and Fox into the arena. He watched as they took the stairs leading up into the stands. The blonde fox fought his side, continuing his stretches before bouncing on his feet. He threw a couple of punches, light and fast jabs, followed by a couple of kicks. Sasuke was walking up to him as well, looking at the blonde. Does Glinda's semblance involve spirits, or something? He questioned incredulously while watching the blonde do whatever he was doing. I do this before every hand-to-hand -hand match. It helps keep my body loose. So, Glinda is going to fight you. Not with a weapon, but fisticuffs? Okay, this I got to see. Sasuke commented before walking up to the stairs leading into the stance. Oh, and Naruto, if you decide to hump a pillow again, please take the bottom bunk. Naruto stopped mid-routine, blushing madly. I wasn't that bad. Uh-huh, practically screwing the pillow like it owed you a few lanes. You're an idiot. Sasuke chided while rubbing his eyes. Also, if you're going to sneak out in the middle of the night, please, please do so more quietly. Oh, come on. I was super silent. Silent as Nora Valkyrie around pancakes, the older teen mumbled, looking at Naruto's fox ears twitch. You hear what I said? Dunce, don't break a leg out there. Hey, quick question. Yesterday you apologized to me. Why? Because I realized there are certain boundaries that are off limits to talk about. I tried pressing into one of yours that warrants an apology. It's called having common decency, the raven-haired teen told the blonde. However, if you want to talk about it. Nope, I'm good. Thank you, Dr. Uchiha. My issues aren't your issues. Heh, Sasuke chuckled at that. You may be a dunce, but you're on my team. Just keep a straight head. Otherwise, I'll put it back in place. Oh yeah, I'd actually like to see you try it. Naruto challenged, 
only to see him walk away. Hey, you know, hay is for horses, right? He heard a familiar voice behind him. Supru, I heard you were going to fight a teach. Hey, Lilac, he greeted his fellow blonde, smiling a little. How did you hear about it? Young got her scroll out, smiling while giggling a little bit. Hang on. She pressed the play button, and Naruto watched as Coco Adele appeared on the screen. Standing in the amphitheater, a crap-eating grin spread across her face. Hello, newbies. My name is Coco Adele. Coming at you live from the amphitheater, it seems two of you are uppity. Welp, today we've got a heck of a match. Come on down and watch some newcomers get there, but handed to them on a silver platter. Yang stopped the message, looking at him. Come on, really? Everyone thinks I'm going to get my ass kicked horribly. Naruto complained while crossing his arms. I've beaten my instructors in Atlas before. Damn, wonder what else those hands are good for. Huh. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. My sister is wondering if it's okay to take Kajitsunamaru with her today? The buxom blonde inquired, putting her hands behind her back a little, playfully leaning forward. So, can she take it with her today? Um, yeah sure, just let me know when she's going to you. You know, repair the blade, Naruto blubbered out brokenly, trying to look away with a blush on his face. He's too cute when he acts innocent, but I overheard you and Sasuke talking. Yang thought to herself before walking past him. I'll be cheering you on. The young blonde man laughed a little. I wonder where the rest of my team is since Coco made that message. Oh, they're already in there. I've just been hiding out waiting for you, Yang told him before she smiled brightly. Do me a favor, Ru. Don't get kicked in the mouth. I'd hate for you to taste feet. Defeat. Defeat. Wait a damn minute. That was a pun, wasn't it? Naruto called out as she walked away, swaying her hips a little bit. Maybe. He was about to turn around when Rose Petals, followed by two people appearing in front, blasted past. Ruby stood there, smiling as Weiss and Blake walked funny. I don't know what that was, but let's not do that ever again, Blake commented before gagging. Oh God. Oh, come on, it isn't that bad. Hey, Nehru, so I was wondering. The answer is yes, Ruby, you can take Kajitsunamaru with you this weekend, Naruto interrupted her with a smile. Your sister already asked. Sweet. The young reaper squealed before looking at him. Do you want me to just rebuild it? Or add something new? Um, I know it's sacrilegious to such ancient weapons, but I don't really see you as a sword person. Plus, even some ancient weapons need an upgrade. I could give it the rose special, adding a gun to it. Ruby offered while he got a pensive look on his face. If you don't like guns, at least let me do something to give it range. The blonde fox sighed before smiling. Any chance of doing something similar to a Naginata? Ooh, I love those. They're like a mix of a sword and spear. Spear's word. Okay, I'll even look up the old Mistralian to carve into it. It'll probably be a few weeks, she admitted before watching the wheels turn in his head. Oh, I'm doing this pro bono on one condition. Okay, what's the condition? You've got to take me and my team to your family's restaurant. I had their food there earlier this week, and ooh, it was so good Ruby sang out while thinking about it. I wanted to order the strawberry shake, but I was too broke at the time. Ruby, if you actually pull off fixing Kajitsunamaru, I'll make you the best damn strawberry milkshake you'll ever have, Naruto told her, which made her blush. It surprised her team, considering she didn't correct his language. Ah uh, shucks, you don't have to do that. Hey, Ruby, let him get his butt kicked. Yang called out from the stairs. WH Ruse got a date with Goodich in a minute. Yeah, that's right, see you around, Nara. Ruby said before running up the stairs, her team following minus Yang. The blonde fox Faunus looked at her funny, his fox ears standing up. Did he just hear her almost say something else other than Rue? Surely not. Then again, for some reason, her voice did carry the same weight as Yellowbird. He felt like calling her that just to see her reaction, but by the time he was going to, she had run up the stairs to follow her sister. Taking a deep breath, Naruto walked forward, coming into the opening of the amphitheater. On a hologram screen, Glinda's aura level was displayed. She was standing on the opposite side of the arena. Naruto could see that several teams were here, with Team Seardiel also sitting near the front. Their leader, Cardin Winchester, was banging on the railing. Show that uppity punk who's boss. Ashpin was standing at the center, holding a scroll near his mouth. His voice boomed throughout the amphitheater. Welcome, I guess, to an impromptu lesson. This is a tournament-style match setting. Each fighter is to keep going until their aura levels reach zero at which point they are to immediately stop. Since Naruto Namikaze has come unarmed, 
Ms. Goodich has agreed to honor that by coming unarmed as well. Bear in mind, honor rules do not exist in actual tournaments. You either come prepared, or you don't. Oshpin stated while walking around. He hit a button. Fighters ready. Naruto took a stance, bringing his fists up like a boxer would. Glinda did the same thing, smirking. As soon as the horn sounded, the younger blonde took off sprinting right at her. Glinda merely walked forward, easily sidestepping him when he flew right at her with a kick. What did surprise her was the fact that he then rolled onto his hands, springboarding backwards. She sidestepped him, barely this time, before getting into punching distance. She threw two jabs that both caught his forearms. He responded by jabbing twice with his right hand. Blocking them was easy. The left hook that came afterwards was charged up with aura. It slammed into her forearms, sending her skidding back a little bit. She was surprised a little, simply because despite the blonde team being lean, he packed a lot of power behind him. He engaged her again, bouncing on his feet toward her. Several jabs were exchanged between them, each one getting blocked and deflected. Then it was her turn. She threw three jabs with her left hand before delivering a powerful straight punch enhanced by Aura with her right. The result was him not only getting knocked back, but he also got knocked back hard since he didn't block it in time. He went flying backwards across the open field before riding himself and sliding to a stop. He ran back over to her, throwing three sidekicks to her left, each one hitting in succession to the other. Shockingly, he then twisted his body as he fell to deliver a fourth kick on her opposite side. She blocked them all, delivering three quick jabs with both her hands in retort. He blocked two of them, taking the third one to his face. She took the initiative now, casting a brief glance at the board. My aura levels haven't dropped, but his, his haven't even moved since I punched him? Interesting, Glinda thought to herself before leaping up and delivering two kicks to Naruto's right side. The blonde barely blocked them, only for her to twist the opposite way and slam him on the left. He careened away sliding on the ground before rolling and riding himself. His nails scraped the dirt as he slowed himself down, slightly hunched over before getting up. Orange aura flowed over him as he stood up, holding out both hands. A loud screeching noise filled the arena as he held two balls of swirling orange energy. Linda's smile widened as she stood straight up, adjusting her glasses. Newcomers who are here, please look to Mr. Namikaze. That is a textbook example of aura manipulation she stated loudly for everyone to hear. That looks like the same thing used on the troll grim, Yang thought to herself. I didn't know he could create two of them. He might actually have a chance. Linda handicapped herself without her weapon. She's not a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. What's her game? Sasuke examined while watching Naruto. Who taught you what you know? Holy crap, that's badass. Nora mentally screamed while looking over Duran. It reminds me of my own aura technique, where I can send a feedback loop through a grim. It's powerful, solid even, but something is up, Rin stated silently before leaning forward. Go, Nero. Ruby screamed. Yang smiled and did the same thing, shouting, get her, Ru. Glinda brought her hand up, motioning for him to bring it. Your move, Mr. Namikase. Naruto blasted off towards her, spinning in the air. Much to her surprise, he led with a kick from the air. She blocked it and then increased aura on her hand to catch the first incoming sphere. Using her light violet aura to shield her hand, he smirked before looking her right in the eye. Her light green eyes widened as the sphere suddenly expanded before bursting. It sent her flying back, taking her aura down a notch, lowering it down to near yellow. Ashpin himself found that move impressive, watching Glinda roll on the ground for a moment. Her eyes widened before a small smile crept across her face. She got up in time to use her aura and channel it into her left hand. Naruto's eyes widened as he fell toward her only to have his second ball of energy yanked out of his hands. She turned on her heel, gathering momentum before slamming it into him. He was blasted back toward the opposite wall, slamming into it. His eyes widened as he slumped forward, onto his knees. Standing tall and smirking, she then looked up. Her eyes widened as his aura gauge barely moved. Breathing hard, he got up before smiling. Wow, that's the first time I've ever seen someone use my own thing against me. Hurts like a bastard. Naruto commented before rubbing his stomach. Ouch, that's gonna leave a bruise. Heh, the combat teacher looked at him as he stood straight back up. Impressive. The younger blonde smashed his right fist into his open left palm. Taking a deep breath and focusing, he reached deep into himself. I think it's about time I try using that power I used on the troll. Sorry, Miss Goodwitch, but I'm not holding back. Naruto yelled out before his aura exploded more around him. 
Instead of red, it was just more orange. His eyes briefly changed colors, only for it to stop. His aura settled down, and he looked up nervously. I may be having technical difficulties over here. He <laughs> he. He nervously chuckled before Glinda raised an eyebrow. You can't activate it at will? No, I don't think so, not yet. However, Naruto then took off running at her. It doesn't mean I'm out. He jumped up, delivering a series of downward kicks, each one focused on knocking her off balance with every strike. Keeping him airborne, he then slammed both feet down, making Glinda stumble back while he backflipped away. He landed on the ground before suddenly dashing to the right and attempting to flank her. She barely blocked the punch, noting that while his aura remained the same, his eyes were different. They were still cerulean blue, but his pupils were fox-like. His punches, speed, and strength were all enhanced. She smirked while dodging back, jumping up to smash his face with her knee. Instead of moving back, however, he caught her leg before throwing her. Linda righted herself midair, only to see the blonde sprinting toward her. He leapt up, meeting her in the air while delivering a flying dragon kick. It connected, but only with her foreleg that she used to block him. Deciding that he was indeed using his semblance, she smirked before having Aura come around her hand. Confusion turned to shock as he suddenly blasted toward the ground by a telekinetic wave of energy. He bounced up from the ground, riding himself before holding his right hand out. Another ball of energy formed in it, and he charged. She smirked, causing rubble to flow around her, some of the stone pieces being as big as beach balls. Focusing on him, the veteran huntress then launched her attack, shooting the stones toward him at a high rate of speed. Much to her surprise, he seemed to follow their movements easily, weaving through them. The young blonde's perception meant that everything appeared to move slower. His eyes slightly glowing, if only for a brief moment, before he saw Glinda lifting up a large rock. She threw it at him, a smirk laced across her face. Instead of jumping over it, he surprised her and everyone else by sliding on his knees under it. She barely brought a telekinetic wave of energy to block the attack. It smashed against the invisible force field. He pushed on it, forcing her back just a little bit. However, that's when his advantage ran dry. Bringing her palm fully up, she'd scattered him before fully pushing her palm outward. The field began to push him back, the ball of energy becoming strained and flattened. Oh shit. His cerulean eyes widened before the ball exploded against the field, sending him flying backward. She watched him soar right into the stands, crashing into a few seats and rolling uphill on the amphitheater. His aura levels finally took a gigantic hit, dropping him down near the red this time around. Ring out. Oshpin screamed over the speakers. What a finisher. Well, students, did we learn something today? She questioned everyone there. Aura manipulation is a two-way street because if someone is equally as skilled, they can turn an advantage against you. Naruto leaned up slowly, a piece of rubble hitting his head. Ouch, he hissed while getting up and stretching. Flexing his arm, he found that he had no injuries. His aura levels, however, were massively depleted. It was weird because even with that blast, he should have been high yellow at worst. Walking down the stand before leaping back onto the field, he ran up to Ms. Goodich. She looked at him, smirking. Yes. Good match, he extended his hand out. Truly it's been a while since someone gave me a run for my money. Well, thank you for the good sportsmanship, Mr. Namikaze. Glinda thanked him before seeing his eyes go back to normal. Don't forget to report to class on time starting next Monday. No, ma'am. I won't be late. He saluted before running off toward the stands. Sasuke hopped down, surprising everyone. Okay, now it's my turn. Oshpin hummed as he handed the scroll off to Glinda and walked towards his side of the arena. He checked the time, nodding his head with a smirk. So, Mr. Uchiha, I got about ten minutes before I need to take a blimp to a dinner date. The headmaster of Beacon stated before holding his cane to the side. And that's my problem, Hal? Oh, it's more or less me saying that I'm sorry in advance. Because, you don't get the handicapped version of me. I hate being late. Ashpin warned him before looking toward Glinda. I'm pretty sure we don't need to go over the rules again. No, we don't, old man. The horn sounded with Sasuke immediately drawing on Akiri. Electricity sparked off the blade. He dashed right toward Ashpin, intending to stab him. The headmaster just brought his cane up to deflect the strike with ease. The Uchiha turned on his heel, spinning his Chikudo to gather momentum and slashed downward. Sparks flew as the cane and sword clashed against each other. Deflecting a cane blow, Sasuke went low with a sweep kick, attempting to trip Ashpin up. The older man smirked before hopping up and kicking the youth across the field. He got up only to see Ashpin readying a thrust with his cane. He barely blocked the first one, 
but the next five hit him in various points across his body. Gah. Sasuke choked before focusing on a rock behind the cane fighter. Ashpin swung at open air as Sasuke appeared behind him, spearing his sword forward, hand pushing on the hilt. His eyes widened in surprise as the man merely placed the cane behind him. Sparks flew off from their impact, with Ashpin turning on his heel to take a golf swing at young man, his cane impacting Sasuke's chest and sending him up in the air. The raven-haired youth looked toward his aura levels, which were now in the yellow. The headmaster appeared above him, sending him crashing into the ground from a kick. Sasuke attempted to get up, only to get a boot to the face for his trouble. His aura was at the halfway point now, his eyes focusing on a nearby piece of rubble. Swapping places with it, he rolled forward before using aura throughout his sword. Lightning current! Sasuke yelled before slamming the sword into the ground, causing blue lightning streaks to flow downward. Ashpin dodged this by merely throwing his cane into the ground and then stepping on top of it. Not bad, Mr. Uchiha, but like I said I'm on a time schedule. Ashpin stated as the lightning on the field died down. So, I'm sorry if I make you look weak, which you're not. Sasuke roared out as he charged, spinning his Chikudo around to gather momentum. He leapt toward Ashpin, slashing at him by spinning his body around. The silver-haired man merely slung his cane up, stopping the Uchiha mid-spin. He then reached up, grabbing Sasuke by the collar of his shirt before slamming him into the ground. His onyx eyes widened before Ashpin slammed the cane down into his chest, breaking his aura. Bastard. Sasuke choked out before slowly taking a deep breath. Oh. Ashpin smiled, checking his watch, and then leaned down toward Sasuke. He whispered into his ear, don't feel bad, because if Glinda wasn't playing with her food, then Naruto would have been out a lot sooner. Sasuke's response was to merely roll his eyes back and pass out. Waishini had received a text from her mother. She was standing in the courtyard of Beacon Academy. Apparently, the artist was here, having arrived a few minutes ago. She chose this spot, simply because of the scenic value. It was Saturday, and her team was gone into the city. Inside of a nearby bathroom, Naruto Namikaze was applying the last bits to his disguise, making sure his whisker marks weren't visible and that the temporary dye in his hair was situated. The extensions blending naturally in, while he got a pair of violet contacts out. He placed them in his eyeballs, completing the transformation into Odorami. He walked out, checking his secondary scroll and noticing her. Last he heard so was most of Team JNPR, and all of HNCO. That's when she heard the shuffling of his shoes. She turned, seeing the fox faunus walking toward her. He had bright crimson hair and ears. His eyes were violet in color, and his face lacked any distinct marks. His hair went down to his shoulders, smooth and combed over. It was almost feminine in a way. He sat down two folding chairs, sitting in one before motioning her to join. He carried a thermos along with a suitcase. Greetings, Miss Shni. I guess you know who I am? The young man greeted her before pouring coffee into a cup. She was handed the coffee, still piping hot. Oh, thank you, sir. It's at Lassian Roast. Your mother said it was your special. My name is Odorami Kazanami, he greeted her, a bright smile on his face. You're very kind. Good sir, she thanked him before sipping it. This is exactly as I like it, strong but sweet. So, about my commission for you. Your mother wants you in full huntress attire. Plus, in a pose similar to any battle stance you would take. It'll take me five hours to get, but that's just getting your detailing down. Coloring and shading isn't required for you to be here, he told her while pouring himself a cup. You'll have to maintain the stance for an hour at least. Out of curiosity, what is my mother paying you? She's paying me 2,000 liens, Odorami answered her before sipping more of the coffee. Mrs. Schnee insisted that her daughter be captured in the field. That does sound like my mother. What about you? A famous artist like yourself charging cheap rates isn't exactly. She was lost for the word, thinking about it. Natural. Yes, because your quality of work is famous. After all, you were one of the last students of the infamous face spin. Weiss mentioned while looking at him, that horrible woman deserved what she got. Yes, she did. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.